I'm here in beautiful Spartanburg, South Carolina, USA at the beautiful BMW Zentra Museum by the BMW factory. It is beautiful on the outside and just as beautiful on the inside. We're going to take a look at some of the classic cars on display and we're going to see some rare examples of some very unique BMWs exclusively for you here on the M2C Marlboro M2C YouTube channel. BMW provides an amazing experience for their customers, their buyers. I highly recommend it. Although we're not allowed to go inside and tour, I've taken a tour already, we're not allowed to film inside. This is where the workers go in. This is the BMW factory and inside they make all the X vehicles for export and for domestic here in the United States. I'm sure you could come down and visit and see the tour for yourself or you can catch some videos online. As you can see the outside is absolutely stunning, modern, super clean and of course during the times of COVID safety regulations are in effect so things are pretty limited but they do a great job keeping it open. Welcome to the BMW Zentrum Museum. Some classic examples of BMWs over the years. And today, we'll start with their Formula One entry, their Formula entry from 2000. If you wanted to see what it looks like, here it is. So this was BMW's first entry, first year back actually in Formula One since the mid 80s. This car was raced by Ralph Schumacher, 2,998 cc's, can create up to 17,500 RPM, 810 horsepower, light. Do you recognize this Z3? Yep, this was in GoldenEye in the James Bond movie. It was the first time James Bond had ever driven a BMW in a movie and James Bond was the very first Z3 customer. This movie car was the first one off the production line. It was hand built in the Spartanburg plant. It's only fitting that the vehicle number is number 007. <laughs> yeah. Do you recognize it? Timeless. So it was produced from 1995 till 2002. Total production was about 297,088. It's a classic. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at this. It's the last Z3M coupe. Almost immediately following the birth of the first Z3 Roadster, the idea that the chassis would benefit greatly from an enclosed roof. So a five-man engineering team met in their rough hours, created the future classic, a no-frills performance sports coupe, brought to the U.S. in 1998. This one-of-a-kind vehicle was the final Z3M coupe produced in Spartanburg. Alpine white, 240 horsepower, three-liter inline six, 17-inch wheels, low profile. Beautiful interior. I don't think we can see the interior here. 
to see me in the window. <laughs> I like it. Looks like a boot. Don't see many of them. Ah, uh, here is the classic M3. 1986 is the Dragon they're all chasing. It's an art. The ultimate driving machine. Four cylinder, 200 horsepower. It swept out the competition at its time and still provides thrills, the M3 line. But this was a real performer for its time. This car just set the standard, the blueprint, if you will. This is the one millionth BMW produced in Spartanburg in the plant. This is the Z4. The one million. And it's in mint, mint new condition. This is the last made Z4 M coupe. Look at that. I think it looks so sharp. Don't look like a clown shoe to me. It looks hot. It's a huge video board here. The beautiful display showing some of the classic BMWs. Here's the X5 from 1999 to 2006. 4.4 .4 liter. This is the SAV that really helped BMW drive forward into the 2000s and beyond. Mint. Uh, you've got to have seen these around. Electric. This is the i8. This is a 2019 i8 looking so much like a supercar. It's a three cylinder, 228 horsepower and 236 torque engine. The E-Drive is 141 horsepower, 184 foot-pounds of torque, electric motor. Total system is 369 horsepower, 420 foot-pounds of torque. E-Drive, Echo Pro, Comfort, Sport Settings, 2-Speed Front Automatic Transmission, 6-Speed Rear Automatic Transmission, an 11.6 kilowatt high voltage lithium ion battery pack, hybrid specific dynamic stability control, all-wheel drive functionality for independent drive sources, brake fade, it is a sharp looking electric car. I think it looks better than the, uh, all the other electric cars to be honest with you. Boy this thing just looks amazing. Here's the front grille. More of a design than it is for functionality. You can see that there's a camera right over here and I think as electric cars go this is just a beautiful example. Well, here's the i3, 2017. Running around the city, running around about. It's a beautiful little 
example. 19 inch turbine light alloys. Dynamic stability control, brake fade compensation, start assistant, brake drying and brake standby. LED lights. 170 horsepower, 180 four foot-pounds of torque perfect for running around and doing all your daily activities this is the M4 CS 2020 3 liter 7 speed DCT dual clutch beautiful looking car this one has carbon ceramic brakes, as you can see right here. Look at that color. Has the carbon fiber, front spoiler lip, air curtain, metallic paint, the $550 option. You can see the sparkles and you can see the quality of that paint. It's got the CS spoiler on the back. It's a beautiful design. It really is. The Z4, uh, excuse me, the M4 competition. Okay, so if we go back to 2009, this is what you would have seen of the M3 GT built to win is your carbon fiber front spoiler the GT style hood and as you can see functional functional venting Inside is set up for racing. And ah, look who drove in this one. This one was 470 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. They retired it after 2012 and it made the world take notice of the M3 again. The high spoiler, carbon fiber, adjustable. Gorgeous. It's the X5M. Built here in South Carolina. Big, graceful, fast. Handles amazingly well. As we move from the X5M and we come around there, we take a good look. And here we have the X3M, a little smaller, really powerful, really nimble. Had a chance to use these. You can check out some of my videos. We got to use these at M Day at the um, UDE, the M Academy. This is first ever electrified high performance vehicle. So it is. It's an SAV worthy of performance. And don't let it fool you. It handles like a car. I know. I've driven them. I've pushed them pretty well and pretty hard. Well, here we've got a 2019 the X4 X Drive 30i. Also beautiful. I like the rounded back design of the X4s. It's like an SAV, but it's like a car. 
and it looks like a car. Plenty of room, very, very comfortable ride. Of course, it's X Drive, four wheel drive. Best of both worlds, my friends. Best of both worlds. Practicality, sporty design, and performance. Just what you would want, what I would want. Here's a classic looking, elegant SAV. It looks very elegant, very beautiful. This is the X7. The X-Drive 50i, pricey, 456 horsepower, two turbo, variable valve, double Vanos, Valvetronic, high precision, direct injection, eight speed, automatic tranny, 21 inch, Y spoke, bicolor wheels, as you can see right here. Doesn't look too hard to clean either. You can get your hands in there and, and pretty much reach everywhere. Unlike my M2 Comp, which is a very difficult rim to clean. So, very elegant, good looking, plenty of room inside, like a limo. We move over to the X6. This is the M50i. Kind of a little bit like a car, like the X4, a little bit bigger, a little more powerful. Another timeless classic design, it's the XXM50i, 4.4 liter, 32 valve, 8 speed sport automatic transmission, 20 inch light alloy V-spoke wheels. We'll take a look at those. Look pretty easy to clean too. Here was the BMW success in the late 50s. The Izetta. Here's an original Izetta. Enter in the front. Passenger goes in here. This is a pristine example of one. Let's see. Phenomenal condition. Simple electronics. Simple design. Here you can see underneath is the horn. <laughs> Simple mechanical design. Built for efficiency. To run her all over. It's probably the most beloved micro car of its time from 1955 to 1962. Designed by an Italian manufacturer but retooled by BMW for low cost transportation. 247 cc engine powered by a motorcycle engine, the R25 motorcycle single cylinder. They sold 161,728 of them during seven years. It helps secure BMW's future as a company in post-war, post-World War II. It's an absolutely beautiful hall, beautiful building that they've put the museum in. Very modern, very good looking, and happy holidays. A lot of autographs on this car. This was the very, very first BMW to roll off the assembly line during an internal event for Associates in September 8th, 1994. This is an Alpine white BMW 318i. Over 700 Associates signed to demonstrate their personal commitment to building a quality car. So here it is, the first South Carolina BMW.
barely ever driven. This is what it would have looked like new without the autographs. Can you imagine having that around now at one of the car show CCA events? <laughs> Okay, so if you guys are James Bond fans, then you'll recognize what this car is. The flash that made history. This is the Z8. Built for speed. Reminiscent of the 507. What you need to know is that this is a 5 liter V8. And in, this is how the 507 they imagined would have looked like over time and have evolved over the years. 0 to 60, 4.5 seconds for a 1999 car that was super quick. And the impact of the design is still being felt today. Z8. I remember seeing this in the dealer's showroom when I was first shopping for my BMWs. And it was just way out of my uh, category, but it was impressive. Okay, so here is a red Z1. You can link to my video. I have a nice Z1 video. This is an 89. It has the red seat back and the green uh, seats, gray seats. Forgive me, I'm colorblind. And the doors, they slide down into the body. So these are very unique, how the doors go up and down. Zukunft, future. Two-seater, 2.5 inline six, 168 horsepower, not the fastest car. It's certainly a good-looking two-seater roadster with interchangeable body panels, plastic. So one can imagine they could swap out the color if they chose. You don't get to see them around. Check out my video and you'll find out more. So we go to the classics now. A 1934 319 pre-World War II. Take a look at this 319. In the 1930s, BMW was having such great racing success with the 315, they decided to produce a version for the public. The 319, a successful racing roadster, turned streetcar. Well, the body styling was similar to the 315. Both cars were produced at the same time. The 319 had a more powerful inline six cylinder with 45 horsepower. Top speed, 72 miles an hour. The 319 was produced in five body versions, including 3029 of this particular saloon sedan. The success of the 315 319 helped increase BMW's market penetration. So although the powerful 319 was only produced from 1934 to 37, it helped BMW make a name for itself. This is in absolutely perfect condition. And you can see the front window opens up by crank. You can fit four people in there pretty easily. Still looks good. I don't suspect you'll see these driving on the road anytime too soon. No. But BMW goes back even further. How much further? 1930. The Il Dixie. 1930 BMW design owes a great deal to the Dixie, a modified racing roadster produced from 1930 to 33. 
This automobile is only the second BMW model ever to be made. Pioneered the kidney-shaped twin radiator grille. Just so you know, that's where the kidney grills came in for the first time for BMW. Notice the elongated shape of the grills. The wire wheels, simple suspension and brakes, four cylinder engine delivered only 15 horsepower. Top speed of 50 miles an hour. Wow. The Dixie gave rise to the newer BMWs, but its contribution to the BMW design DNA just lasted for decades. Oops, so sorry. The design lasted for decades. It was the predecessor to that BMW design. the Dixie. Notice how the exhaust shoots back towards the wheels. It does not come out the back of the car. The exhaust coming out by the wheels. Look at the back design. Is it coming or is it going? That's the rear of the car. I can see some motorcycle design in this one, guys. You could take a factory tour museum. You're not allowed to show pictures or take pictures inside the factory, but I was able to take the tour. And I was able to get to see them assembling the X3s and the X5s. Fascinating tour I recommend to anybody. Overall it was a fun tour. It was great to see the original prototype cars. Um, the tour takes as long as you want it to take. It depends how much and how involved you want to get in and how much detail you want to look at. I highly recommend it. It's a worthwhile stop when you visit the Spartanburg, South Carolina, and the factory, and the area. Please subscribe and like our channel. Thanks for watching. lined up here in a row. Beautiful cars and a beautiful modern building. This is the BMW Zentrum Museum. Thank you for joining. Hope you get to visit one day. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the Marlboro M2C channel for more car enthusiasts and BMW featured videos.